So, one thing I, I decided, I made like a, a decision. By the way, it's Sunday, it's the first day of the week in Israel. Um, the weather is changing, finally. You know, we've had such a long summer. It's now, what is it, October 31st? And it's the first time I've seen a clouded sky. And might, it might rain. This is the Middle East for you. But, you know, summer till October 31st is ridiculous. We don't have cute squirrels here. But we do have an ocean not far away that I can go to if I want. I usually exercise by the river. It reminds me of India a little bit, like a lot of things here. I've never been to India, but a lot of things here are similar to India. Um, probably the salaries you earn. <laughs> Uh, as a teacher, it's like volunteering, really. Sometimes I think, am I a volunteer? And I say yes. So Donald Trump is very entertaining, but you have to be really crazy to vote for him. I don't know if you're like American who's watching this. Don't vote for somebody who, who is racist. Because I was just thinking how I grew up, okay? So I did spend formative years in Queens, New York. Very few years, but formative. Uh, my mom didn't want me to go to a religious school. So I went to a public school where I was bullied by other Jewish girls. <laughs> that was funny. Not really. Um, it wasn't the easiest place to go to school. But it was a... I mean, I learned there, if you survive uh, being bullied, you survive everything. It gave me a lot of... In a strength, because I didn't really have parents I could depend on or anyone I could depend on, actually, you know, siblings, no one who could help me, really. So, I mean, I had siblings, but nobody could help me. So, what is, what, which point am I bringing, coming to? So, yeah, I saw, like, Trump's life. Apparently, him and his father were sued by this African-American because they wouldn't rent to African-American people in their housing complex and I thought oh my god if a person is like that when they're an adult it's like they said oh he doesn't really disrespect women when he was at the age of 60 grabbing women by their genitalia using his Miss American pageant the whole idea of choosing a woman based on her looks is despicable and you know I did listen to Steve Bennon and you know, you know, speak about how they're looking out for the little guy. Yes, I get it, there's corruption, but it's kind of curing something like to quote Trump. The cure can't be worse than the disease, and Donald Trump is not going to cure America, he's just going to make America racist because under his administration, there were the worst attacks against Jews, the worst attacks against African Americans. And what I really irritated me that nobody asks is why he refused to have a police training for racist awareness. I mean, why wouldn't you want your police officers to be aware of how to handle African Americans when they are being targeted and they are, uh, they make up the most of prisoners? Why wouldn't you want that sort of training? I think Joe Biden, despite his corruption, sounds so much more sane. Camilla, Camilla, Camilla is, is like an amazing lady. And I want to know, since when is being liberal a curse? Being liberal means, comes from, com, comes from the word liberty. So to want freedom, the same freedom other people have, eh, sorry, the same freedom you have for other people to have, shouldn't be a curse. It should be a virtue. But yet, these people just twisted and made this sound as if, and this is in Israel the same, being left is like the enemy of the people. Since when? Since when having a, another political opinion a sign of you being uh, an enemy? You know what it is an enemy of? Democracy. All these people that divide and left, right, and... If you have someone speaking against people, generalizing them, and I think it is racist to say all oh, leftists are like this and that, 
it is a form of racism to generalize a group of people. If somebody speaks to me about my gender, my age, my ethnic group, anything, it's not okay and you should call them out. And I think Donald Trump has been only, only doing that, pointing out people, we and they. And, and Bibi Netanyahu does the same. And a lot of us are sick of it. I'm not going to demonstrate. I only demonstrate for animal rights, women rights, and minority rights. I do not like to demonstrate against generalized generalized goals, such as getting the prime minister to leave, because no prime minister or leader is political leader is going to leave just because a bunch of people make noise. The only way you're going to get rid of a politician in democracy is to vote him out. So please vote out Donald Trump. Yes, he made deals, peace deals, but we still don't know if these peace deals are worth anything or if it was just a show. I don't know if he didn't give Sudan or United Emirates weapons in exchange for peace. And if they have a lot of weapons and they're dictatorships, how do I know they're not going to attack Israel? How do I know this peace is actually a, a, an agreement I can depend on? I mean, Jared Kushner has no training whatsoever. And it's really funny. They went on after Hunter, Hunter, Hunter Biden. You see, in, in Hebrew, we don't really have the like in America. Hunter Biden is like being appointed to this energy company in Ukraine, this corrupt energy company making millions. But what about Jared Kushner being appointed to make Middle East negotiations just because he's Jewish or his parents or grandparents were in the Holocaust? That is crazy. He has no training, no education. There's so many people in the U.S. who are scholars and know about the Middle East. Why in the world would you send a person just because he's married to your daughter? And he's Jewish. Oh, let's just take, you know, this is a country for where 9 million people here. I guess most of us is, are Jews here. Let's just pick a person from the street and get him to negotiate Middle East. Middle East conflict. That'd be more suitable than Jared Kushner, who, as far as I know, hasn't spent any time in Israel or the Middle East. And, oh, by the snap of the finger, they have peace agreements. Am I suspicious? Very. Um... I ideally would like to see people uh, leading the country who don't divide it. And that's why we don't like Bibi Netanyahu, because he's dividing people. He doesn't like leftists, he doesn't like people who talk about human rights. Um, and it's we and they, and Trump is exactly the same way. So if you're still thinking who to vote for, and you have a, a right to vote, please don't vote for Donald Trump. We don't want him. I mean, we, I'm speaking for myself. and group of people who think like me that dividing people and anyone who's generalizing groups of people is a racist. Whether it's leftists, generalizing leftists, libertarians, democrats, whatever. And certainly he has been targeting ethnic groups. As, as an adult man, a man who refuses to rent to African Americans, it's not all of a sudden going to change his mind and be pro African Americans. So, if you're really pro black, you would go, you would definitely stick with people that have liberal views. And perhaps, you know, his bill against Joe Biden's bill in the prison was, at that time, was what they thought was right because there was so much crime in America. Of course, every decision you make has a uh, you know, it has uh, consequences that maybe they didn't foresee. The thing is that Joe Biden is human. He doesn't present himself as, a, as like a demigod, which Donald Trump does. Anyone who presents himself like as a demigod is like, no wonder he has so much in common with the leader of North Korea, who has like statues dedicated to him and people worship him like as if he was God. Donald Trump really thinks he's, a, he's God and he says such stupid things that you really wonder, uh, <laughs> you know, you really, really wonder how this man got so far. And, and my answer, people like Steve Bannon. Now, Steve Bannon says he's not racist, he's not this, he's not that. And yet, he generalizes all the Democrats. And he, he actually says he supports regimes like Orban, the Hungarian um, leader, and the Italian 
leader who's nationalist extreme right. Now, the problem with nationalism is that it not only rhymes with racism, but it leads to racism. Because if you believe that only your country matters, and if you don't look at the bigger picture of um, ecology, of the need to think about the future, just didn't even let her out with her little buggy, then, you know, I don't think you can be a good leader. He's supposed to be the leader of the free world, and yet he's only focused on USA. And that's stupid, because USA is a world leader. You know, traditionally, historically, the United States has led the free world. So you can't just say America first. There was a joke right after he was voted in, all the countries did, like Israel first or France first. And it's ridiculous because you can't just put your country first and not be a fascist. Because if you say, I come first, and everybody else follows, it's, it's not social. And when you say, oh, socialism is a bad world, word, what does socialism really mean? Isn't it social awareness? Isn't it thinking about others? Isn't it thinking about the less advantage of society? Having said that, I realize that the Obama administration made very bad decisions, foreign policies, etc. And I know that Trump has, like, he's really tough. And he has very smart people like Steve Bannon and other people in his administration. But also this pro-life thing. I just saw Breakfast with Tiffany. So Tiffany, who's inherited his, his mouth, she looks like, I'm sorry to say this, but I have to say this. She looks like she's a blow-up doll. She has this round mouth. You know, like plastic dolls that you blow up, these sex dolls I've seen in movies. So they, she has this round mouth, like him, what is called a pie hole. She looks like like a caricature of him. It's like you put a, a blonde wig on him and made him into a smart lawyer. And she's not that. She's like a giggly blonde. Looks a little bit like a skinny Miss Piggy. So she's like, oh, I really admire this judge. She has seven children and she's a judge. You know what? You have seven kids and you have an academic career and you're a professor. Great. But you know what? Guess what? You're an exception. Most women don't have seven children in a career. I had three children and I didn't have a career because there was nobody else but me taking care of them. And guess what? I don't mind now because I'm an autistic person. But you know what? Had I been career-minded and driven, seven kids would not have helped it because most of the time the woman ends up doing the childcare and the housework and everything. So I don't know how she managed it. I'm guessing she's really good at uh, allocating responsibility. But that's not the kind of person you want making decisions about your reproductive rights. If you're a woman, let's say uh, a teenager, if you were raped or you, you, you didn't know enough about preventing uh, pregnancy and you're pregnant, why should you go through hell in order to have an abortion when you cannot raise a baby? It's easy for the rich, wealthy people or the ones that are well organized and have a whole church and community behind them. But for people that are living in difficult circumstances and don't have help, abortion is really a necessity. And women should have a right to decide. So I think it's, um, it makes a mockery of women to actually say, oh, this is the role model. This is how you're supposed to go by a woman who has seven children and a career because you can do it too. No, you can't. Most chances are you're not going to do it. And if anybody tells you that, they're telling you fairy tales. So, just that shot of reality. The whole pro-life movement is actually against women because you know what? Who gets stuck with the babies? It's the women. It's not the men. It's the women who have to take care of the kids. So, you know, you want to be pro-life, Mike Pence? Go stay home with the kids and see how that feels like if you don't have enough money to pay a babysitter or some childcare. So that's what I wanted to say. Have a good day. Bye.